continue on here and let's try an example. Okay. So we can, uh, so I don't know, maybe this is not a good example, but we'll, we'll do it. Okay, so let's say we've got a big tub full of uh, M&Ms, okay? And someone says that, um, okay, so we have a tub of M&Ms. And someone claims that in the tub, the proportion of, I don't know, green M&Ms is 25%. And you go, no, no, that's, that's too much, okay? So, Uh, you believe this percentage is too high. You believe that the actual percentage is lower. Actual, we'll say proportion. Is lower, okay? So, you take a random sample Uh, we'll say 150 M&Ms, okay? And you count how many green M&Ms that you have. You count a total of, we'll say, 28 green M&Ms, okay? And so now the question is, does your data provide evidence that the proportion of green M&Ms in the tub is lower than 25% or lower than 0.25? Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll walk you guys through this problem. And I just wanna, well, I guess before we, uh, we go on, we wanna make sure that even the, the problem makes sense, okay? So we've got a big tub. Someone is claiming that the proportion of M&Ms in the tub that's green is 0.25. And so we're going to test this claim. And we take a random sample of 150 M&Ms and we count how many are green. And when we do that, we get 28 green M&Ms. And we want to know, okay, does the fact that I only got 28 green M&Ms out of 150, does this cause me to believe that the proportion of M&Ms in the tub is lower than 25%? So without even having to count the entire tub, can I just take a sample of 150 and say, ah, this is enough for me to say that the proportion is not 25%. Okay, so we're gonna start off with our hypotheses. This is step one, will be our hypotheses. Okay, what will our null hypothesis be? Our null hypothesis is that P, the proportion in the population is equal to some number. Okay, so the null hypothesis always has an equal sign, and so what are we going to test here? We, we want to know, is the proportion of the population equal to 0.25? We want to know, is the proportion in the tub that's green, is it equal to 0.25? So P is the proportion of green M&Ms. The alternative is that 
the proportion that's actually in the tub is what? Is that P is less than 0.25, okay? So the alternative is always identical to the null, except you replace the equal sign with either a greater than, a less than, or a not equal to, okay? And because the question says, does your data provide evidence that the proportion of green M&Ms is lower, this means we got P is less than 0.25, okay? So what kind of test do we have, one-sided or two-sided? This is going to be a one-sided test. One-sided test, and we know it's a one-sided test because the alternative has a less than sign. Is that good? Okay, so step two will be our prep step, preparations, okay? So we're going to, um, I'll just tell you all the conditions are met, okay? So uh, basically, uh, random sample, you know, random, independent, that's met. Large sample condition, okay, we need at least... Uh, 10 failures and at least 10, 10 successes and 10 failures. We have 28 that are green, and that means we have 122 that are not green, right? Because we have a total of 150 in our sample. Both of those numbers are bigger than 10, so that's met, okay? Big population. So, you know, we, it doesn't specify how many are in the tub, but if you think of like a bathtub full of M&Ms, you're gonna have more than 1,500, right? So you do 150 times 10, you're gonna have more than that in the uh, in the bathtub full of M&M, so that's gonna be met. Okay. Alpha was not provided in our problem, so we're gonna assume alpha is 0 0.05 because it was not specified. So we're gonna assume alpha is 0 0.05. Okay, let's uh, continue on and see uh, what we get. Is this good with everybody? So far so good? All right, let's look at step three. Okay, so step three, as far as uh, the calculations go, we'll start off with our standard error. Our standard error is gonna be the square root of P0 times one minus P0 divided by N. Okay, what's our P0? What's the value that showed up in our null hypothesis? 0.25, right? And what was our sample size, our n? 150, right? So we're gonna have a standard error of 0.25 times one minus 0.25 divided by 150. Let's uh, punch this into our calculator here. Okay, so square root 0.25 times 1 minus 0.25 divided by 150, okay, and we get 0 0.035355, okay, that's our standard error, um, this is 3a, okay, let's get our test statistic, okay, our test statistic is the difference between what we observed minus what we expected divided by the standard error, okay? So our observed is going to be p hat minus p0 divided by our standard error. What is our p hat? p hat's our sample proportion. 28 divided by uh, 150, okay? So... What is that? It's like 0.1766. I don't know. 28 divided by 150. Yeah, 0.1866. Okay. Now, and what is my P0? P0 again is 0.25. Standard error is up up there. So actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just hit um, parentheses, and over here I'm going to do. Uh, 28 over 150, 
going to subtract off 0.25 and close off the parentheses. And here I'm going to plug in the answer. Okay. I hit enter. I get this thing. I get uh, a z-score of negative 1.79. Okay, so what do you guys get? You get a 1.79? Okay, so that's my z-score. My z-score is negative 1.79. Okay. So I look up negative 1.79 in my z-table. Okay, so over here we're going to look up z equal to negative 1.79 in the z-table. Okay. Now, because uh, the alternative has a less than sign, our p-value is the area to the left of z. Okay, that should be in your notes. So I'm going to look up z equal to negative 1.79. And because I'm just going with the area to the left of z, I don't need to um, subtract anything from 1. I just take the number that shows up in the table. Okay, I get negative 1.79 and I get 0 0.0367. So my p-value is equal to 0 0.0367. Is that okay with everybody? So, z is equal to negative 1.79. I looked that up in the table. The area to the left is 0 0.0367. Okay, and that's going to be my p-value. All right. Once I have my p-value, what do I do? I make my conclusion. Okay, so my p-value, 0.0367, I forget what I said. Yeah, 0.0367, okay. What was my alpha? My alpha was 0.05, okay. That's the assumed alpha. So what we have is that this number, p, p is less than alpha, okay. Our p-value is less than alpha. What does this mean? This means that our p-value is small and we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, Recall what was our null hypothesis? Our null hypothesis was that p is equal to 0.25 and our alternative was that p is less than 0.25. Okay, So what this means is that our sample of M&Ms provides evidence that the proportion of M&Ms in the tub is not 0.25, but rather it is something less than 0.25. I'm sorry, proportion of green M&Ms. OK? Uh, another way of stating this is that, OK, if the tub were actually, uh, actually were 25% M&M, OK, 0.25 green M&Ms, OK? Uh, it is technically possible to get a random sample <coughs> where 
were only 0.1866 of the M&Ms are green. But the probability of that happening happens less than 4% of the time, okay? But that happens, you know, fairly rarely. Okay, 0.0367 of the time. Okay, so the fact that we did get a sample like this tells us that our tub is not actually 25% green. Do you want another example like this, or cover the next topic? Next topic? Okay, I got a few head, head nods. Everyone's just ready to get out of here, I guess. <laughs> I don't blame you. It's August 9th, Olympics are going on. Okay. Okay, so the uh, the next topic will be hypothesis testing for proportions. Okay. But we've got um with two samples. Hypothesis testing for proportions and we're dealing with two samples. Okay. So here, basically, um, we're going to look at two samples, and we want to say, based on these two samples, can we say that their respective populations have different proportions? Okay. So it could be like, is the we take a sample of people from California, a sample of people from Texas, and we say, uh, you know. Are you, I don't know, going to vote for such and such candidate? Okay, and we can say, um, based on our sample, you know, 55% of Californians said they're going to vote for this candidate. In Texas, 40% of the people in the sample said they're going to vote for this candidate. Okay, because our, you know, our samples had two different proportions, does that mean that the respective entire populations? Have different proportions, or is it possible that the two samples just ended up with different proportions from random chance? Okay, because they're random samples, right? If I were to take another sample of Californians, maybe I won't get 55% saying they're going to vote for this person, but maybe only 52% will say they're going to vote for this person. And then maybe if I go to Texas again and I take another sample, I won't get 40%, but I get like 40. 6% or something, you know, we get different different proportions every time we take samples. So is the fact that I got two different proportions, is that evidence that the respective populations are indeed different? Or is it possible that the proportions are different just from random chance? That's what we want to know. Okay, that's, that's what we're doing with a hypothesis test for proportions with two samples. Okay, so we want to know, you know, if we take two samples, two different samples, or I'll say two samples, uh, oh, let me say, well, let me rephrase this. If we take a sample from two populations, okay, if we take a sample from two populations and find 
that the sample proportions are different. Okay. Does that then mean that the respective populations have different proportions. Okay, that's that's essentially what we want to know. So I'll just write out the silly example, and then we can. Um, all right, so we sample 100 people from California, and we'll say 53 say they will vote for candidate A. Okay, and then we sample 100 people from Texas. Again, random people, random sample. And we'll say 45. Uh, well, maybe, um, I don't know. 42, say they will vote. Or candidate A. Okay, does this mean so? You know, and this is only a hundred people. Maybe it's not. Maybe you didn't collect enough data. That's a possibility, right? And the the test will tell us that. Um, okay, so does this mean that? Uh, Respective populations have different um, proportions. Okay, let's uh, let's go through this. All right. So. Um, so the difference between this one and the previous type of problem was that previously we only had one sample. One sample and we were testing it against a given proportion value, okay? We were sending you. Is the, we took one sample of M&Ms and we're testing that against some number that was provided, 25%, okay? In this case, we've got two separate samples and we know, want to know, are the two respective populations, are they, uh, do they have different proportions? Okay, so we'll, we'll go through the, uh, the steps, okay? So step one will be write our hypotheses. So I'm gonna just kind of write the instructions again, and then we'll, um, we'll do an example. Okay, S step one, the hypotheses. The null hypothesis is always gonna be is that P1 is equal to P2. Basically, P1 is the proportion in population one and P2 will be the proportion in population two. So the null hypothesis is that the two proportions are equal, okay? This null hypothesis can also be written as P1 minus P2 is equal to zero, okay? So basically we're saying is that P1 is equal to P2, or another way of saying is that the difference between P1 and P2 is that that difference is nothing, is zero, that there's no difference. So one is you're saying two things are the same, or the other one is you're saying there's no difference between the two things. Same thing, okay? So that's the null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis, okay? Again, null hypothesis always has an equal sign. The alternative will be that P1 does not equal P2, 
or P1 is greater than P2, or P1 is less than P2, okay? Or uh, conversely, they can also be written as P1 minus P2 does not equal zero, or P1 minus P2 is greater than zero, or P1 minus P2 is less than zero, okay? But these will be our hypotheses. Okay. Step two, uh, this is the same as before, okay? The preparation step, same as before. Check your conditions and identify alpha. Alpha is 0.05 by default, or it's specified in the problem. Okay. All right, we'll do uh, the calculations. Step three. And this is where things are uh, the most different. Okay, so we have a step three zero, okay? And this is um, find the overall p hat. Okay, this is calculations. And again, this is for proportions uh, with two samples. P hat overall is going to be equal to x1 plus x2 divided by n1 plus n2, okay? x1 will be quote-unquote successes in population 1. x2 is successes, the arbitrary, again, these are arbitrary labels, successes, in population two, N1 is sample size one, and N2 is sample size two. Okay, so figure out your overall P hat. That's step three, part zero, okay? All right, 3A, standard error, okay? The standard error, it's just a, an ugly formula. We can't really do anything about it. For proportions with two samples, it's going to be p hat times 1 minus p hat times 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. Okay? This is just the, uh, and you're using the p hat that you found in step 30. Okay? In the previous step, you find that overall p hat, and then you're going to use that in the calculation of the standard error. This part is what we have. Okay. Is that all right? Okay, and then step 3b is getting your test statistic, and this is very similar to before. Test statistic is the difference between what we observed minus what we expected divided by our standard error. So in this case, our z-score, what we observe is the difference between p hat 1 and p hat 2. Okay. If the null hypothesis were true, we would expect this difference to be 0. So the expectation we would actually have a minus 0, but minusing 0 it kind of is silly to write plus zero, right? Like uh, plus zero or minus zero. So like I'm just, I leave, we leave it off, right? So we just say p hat one minus p hat two, and we're going to divide this by the standard error. You can pretend that there's a minus zero there. 
but this is kind of uh, the observed difference that we have. So the observed difference between proportions is p hat 1 minus p hat 2. OK. Once you have your test statistic, what do we do? We look up the test statistic, look up z in the table to get a p-value. And the rules for getting uh, the p-value from your z are exactly as before. So if the alternative has a less than, you find the area to the left of z. If the alternative has a greater than, you find the area to the right of z. If the alternative has a not equal to, you take 2 times the tail area. And the tail area is the area to the left of z is negative. The tail area is the area to the right of z is positive. Okay, That should be in your notes and the previous stuff for... Um, the p-values for one proportion. Okay, it works exactly the same way. Look up z in the table to get a p-value, and it works the same way as it did with one proportion or with one sample. And then last, finally, we make our conclusion, OK? And this part is also very similar. So here with the conclusion, if the p-value is greater than alpha, this means we do not reject the null hypothesis. And this means our data does not provide evidence that the respective populations have different proportions. Okay. And on the other hand, if the p-value ends up less than alpha, that means we reject the null hypothesis and we say Our data does provide evidence that the uh, respective populations are different. I'm sorry, the respective populations do have different proportions of whatever it is that we're talking about. Is this all right? So let's uh, let's try this out. Okay, so let's say um, we take a random sample. We'll say 100 people from California. And what did I have written before? 53, 52, 50, whatever. Huh? 53 
say they will vote for candidate A. Okay. And then again, random sample from Texas. And we'll say, what did I say? 40, 42 say they will vote for candidate A. I'm just making these numbers up from some hypothetical election. Okay, and then we want to know, okay, um, so we have a few options for this, okay? And one is we're going to just say, does our data, or do our data, does our data provide evidence? So we'll, we'll, we'll start off with the two-tail test. Okay, two-tail scenario. Does our data provide evidence that the proportions of um, people who support candidate A are different? Uh, in the two states. Okay, so here we're just asking, are they different? And we're not implying. So in some some cases, we would imply that we expecting California to be higher and Texas to be lower, or we're expecting Texas to be higher and California to be lower. In in some cases. Uh, here we're not we're not expecting one to be higher than the other. We're just saying, are they different? Okay, we're not going in with some kind of uh, preconceived notion of what um, the you know pro proportion of um, supporters of you know whatever candidate we're talking about. Okay, so here we're just asking, are they different? Okay, so let's set up our hypotheses. Okay, what is our null hypothesis? Well, we've got two things, and we got so we're going to have p1 is equal to p2, okay? And we're just going to have to arbitrarily assign one of these states to be state one and the other one to be state two. So p1, I'm going to just say, is California. This will be supporters of candidate A in California, and then p2 will be, you know, supporters of A in Texas, okay? And the proportion of supporters, I guess, in California and the proportion of supporters in Texas. So that's our null hypothesis. What will our alternative hypothesis be? The alternative is always identical to the null, except we replace the equal sign with a different sign, okay? And so here, for because it says different, we're going to use a not equal sign, okay? If the question said, does our data provide evidence that the proportion of people who support candidate A is higher in California than Texas, then we would use, you know, a greater than sign. But in this case, because it says it's different, we're just going to use the not equal sign. All right. Does that make sense? Yes? Should I write that down? Or, or we understand this? Okay. We got one person speaking up, and so that person's going to speak for the room. All right. Uh, yeah, if no one else speaks up, then uh, then then that that's the voice. <laughs> okay. So um, we'll we'll do our preparations here, and then basically in this step we'll, we'll check the uh, conditions, and I'll just tell you conditions are met just for the sit. We'll say conditions met. Okay, and then we'll uh, uh, we'll use alpha equal to 0 0.05. Okay, let's do our calculations. So first, we got to find our overall p hat. P hat is going to be x1 plus x2 
divided by n1 plus n2. Okay, so here we have 53 plus 42. These are uh, what we have in California and what we have in Texas. So this is going to be give me a total of 95 over 200, and I think this is 0.475. Huh? All right, and so this is my overall p hat. Um, in this example, we happen to have n1 and n2 equal to each other. They don't necessarily have to be the same size. Okay, you can have vastly different n1 and n2s, and, and that's totally fine. The next part. So this is step three zero. Step three a. Find the standard error. This is the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat times 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2. So I have 0.475 times 1 minus 0.475 times 1 over 100 plus 1 over 100. Yeah, so let's uh, let's do this. I'm going to 0.475 times parentheses 1 minus 0.475 times parentheses 1 over 100 plus 1 over 100. And I get 0 0.070622, yeah? Here we're going to get our z-score now. So this is going to be our observed, or I'm just going to go straight to it. And we'll do p hat 1 minus p hat 2. And we're going to take this difference, and we're going to divide by the standard error. OK? So p hat 1 was 53 over 100, or 0.53, right? So p hat 1 is 53 divided by 100, which gives me 0.53. It's uh, easy when you have nice, neat numbers. And over here, we have 0.42 divided by 100. We have 0.42. All right, 42 divided by 100. OK with everybody? Yeah? OK, so I'm going to do uh, this up top, 0.53 minus 0.42. And on the bottom, I'm going to just plug in the answer that I have. And I got 1.557. Okay, it's a z-score, so I'm going to round off to two, two decimal places. And I have 1.56. So my z is equal to 1.56. Step 3c. Now we're going to get our p-value. Okay, z is equal to 1.56. What kind of test do I have? One tail or two tail? Two tail test, right? So two-tail test means my p-value is two times the tail area. All right, what is the tail area? Tail area is the area to the right when I have a positive z. It's the area to the left if I have a negative z. But because I have a positive z, my tail is the area to the right of z equal to 1.56 because um, because z is positive, right? Okay, so I look up 1.56, and I get, uh, I can't read, 0 0.9406, okay? So I have 0 0.9406, and I want the area to the right, so this is area to the left, so the area to the right is equal to 1 minus 0 0.9406. 1 minus 0 0.9406. 0 0.0594. That's my tail area. 
So my p value is 2 times the tail area. I have 0.0594 times 2, and this gives me 0.1188. My p value is 0.1188. Is that okay? This is my p value. So, what this means is that, well, let's go on. Can I, can I flip to the next slide or are we still ready? We're good, okay. <laughs> All right, so let's, uh, let's make our conclusion. All right, so we've got um, our p value equal to 0.1188. So, this means that. Um, so we do not reject the null hypothesis, right? So we, if we compare our p-value, our p-value is bigger than alpha, and this means do not reject the null hypothesis, okay? And so what this says is that, um, you know, after taking two samples of 100, two samples of 100 people, okay, we do not have evidence that the proportion of candidate A supporters is different in Texas and California. Or in different in California and Texas. All right. Now, if we took more samples, okay, if we took a larger sample and we still had the same kind of difference, then we might have evidence. Okay. But at this point, we got one sample that said 53%, another sample that 40 said 42%. It, it doesn't provide evidence at this point. Okay. Another way to look at this. If we focus on the meaning of the p-value, right? So if we ask what is the p-value, the p-value is the probability of observing our data. I'm just uh, rewriting the uh, definition from before. Of observing our data or something more extreme if the null hypothesis were true. So what this means is that if California and Texas uh, have both have the same proportion of candidate A supporters, then it is still possible for two random samples you know to produce um, to produce um, proportions of 0.53 and 0.42, just from random chance. Okay, and in fact, um, that kind of difference. Or even, or you know, or even something greater, that kind of difference, or something greater, happens. Something greater 
you know, has a probability of about 12%, has a probability of 0.1188 of just happening. So it's, you know, it's a non-negligible amount. The results that we have here could have just been a result of random chance. Okay? Perhaps they align with our you know, preconceived notions of what California and Texas look like, whatever, okay? whatever that might be. But in this case, you just took two random samples of 100 people and you got this. This could have just happened from random chance, even when the uh, proportion of supporters is the same in both, in both uh, populations, okay? Is that okay? Does it, pr does it mean that California and Texas have the same proportions? No, it doesn't mean that. It just means at this point, with the amount of data we've collected, we can't say that there is a difference. Okay, it doesn't mean that the proportions are the same. It just means that with the data we've collected, our data doesn't provide evidence of a difference. Okay, so, all right, please note that we write, we do not reject the null hypothesis, okay? We do not say we accept the null hypothesis, okay? And what this means is that, um, you know, our data does not provide evidence that the proportions in California and Texas are different. but that does not mean that the proportions are the same. Okay, so we cannot, uh, when we talk about hypothesis tests, we cannot say that we've proven that the null hypothesis is true. All we can say is that we don't have data to reject the null. Okay. They could be the same, the, you know, the null hypothesis could be true, but we can never actually prove that it is true. All we can say is we've collected a bunch of data and we don't have reason to believe that, uh, that this is different, okay? And, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, slightly controversial topic, you know. So lots and lots and lots of tests have been done to see, you know, is there a link between <coughs> vaccines and autism, okay? And lots of studies have been done. And all of the studies show there's no data to indicate that there is a link between autism and vaccines, okay? Um, but the way statistics is headed up, we can never actually prove that there is no link, okay? It's just not possible to prove that there is no link. All we can say is that we've done, you know, hundreds of studies, and none of them have found a link between, the, between autisms and vaccines. Um, but, but until you, um, and, and that's just how statistics is. You can't actually prove the null hypothesis is true. You can't prove that the proportion is equal to something. All you can say is that we don't have evidence that they're different, okay? Um, and that's, uh, so uh, at the end of the day, science is hard to do. <laughs> it's, uh, 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 studies, studies are difficult and you can do a lot of work and, uh, and come to a, basically this 
conclusion to not reject the null. Um, and I mean, that's, a, that's still a very valid study and very valid conclusion. Um, and, uh, and that's just how we, uh, how we do research. All right, um, we'll, uh, we'll end here today. Um, you know, please review these. You'll see uh, this kind of questions in your quizzes. You'll see uh, homework problems posted. Um, so do those. Uh, good luck. <laughs>